calling this a bittersweet night here on Eyewitness News. After 40 years of delivering weather forecasts in Utah, Mark Eubank tonight will give his final forecast on the air. He is retiring. From the hundreds of comments we've received on our website, it's pretty clear that all of Utah has appreciated Mark's service just as much as we, his friends, have. One longtime viewer, local songwriter and producer, Robert Lund, recorded his tribute to Mark in this song. They say that folks tune in each night to find out if his jacket's dark or white. Bank. I'll miss you, Bank. I'll miss you, Bank. You know what? So will we. Indeed. We'll be watching tonight at 10. Winter is of three. Here's the frozen <laughs> shirt. There right here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jody. He's been a part of Utah's television landscape for more than 40 years. And tonight, Mark Eubank will deliver his final weather forecast on the KSL Eyewitness News at 10. I'm not leaving the weather. The hard part is leaving your colleagues and, and the wonderful people in Utah. And I'll, I'll not be seeing them on a day-to-day, day-to-day, face-to-face basis. But my son is there, and so I'll live vicariously through him. In fact, last night, Mark's broadcast friends from various television radio stations honored him, and he ceremoniously passed his famous snow coat to his son, Kevin, who will assume forecasting duties on Channel 5. In retirement, Mark says he's going to concentrate on improving long-range forecasting. We wish him the very best. Good luck, Mark. We're going to miss you, too. Stay tuned, everyone. The uh, quick cast is coming up. You've probably heard it by now. This is Mark Eubanks' final broadcast. He's retiring from television, anyway. But if you know Mark, he's not really retiring. He always has been and always will be a weatherman. In fact, his passion for weather has made him a fixture in Utah homes for decades. Dennis Tolman checks the temperature and wind velocity and rain gauges and reports them to Mark Eubank every day. I contacted Mark. He sent me plans to build a weather box and uh, what equipment I needed to put in it. Mark Eubank made Dennis Tolman an official Weather Bank weather watcher 35 years ago. And he has carried his official weather watcher card, number 2405, signed by Mark Eubank ever since he was in junior high school in Ephraim, Utah. I treasured this. This was uh, the most important thing that I had. The guy is a, a master at uh, teaching people and bringing those kinds of things, some of them very, uh, fairly technical, uh, right down to the level where we could all understand them and appreciate them. Mark's ability to connect with big people and little kids about all things weather is personal. Just listen to this letter from a little girl in West Valley who wrote with a perfectly reasonable request. Dear Weatherman, will you send some wind so I can fly my kite? Shannon B. Give me a call if you need me. Dear Shannon, thanks for your nice letter. We will be sending you some wind next week, so get ready. It'll be great for flying your kite. I hope you have fun. He loves weather. Tosh Kano has known Mark for more than 40 years, and Mark has made Tosh's wonder tortoise E.T. famous for her incredible ability to predict how harsh or mild Utah's winters might be. And so far, she's been right every year, and um, actually that's better record than the Mark Eubanks forecasting. Anybody that's watched him for a while knows that there's not just four seasons. It's winter, sprinter, spring, summer, sprummer, fall, and finter, and I think I may have missed one or two. It's going to be hard to uh, fill his shoes. We're going to miss him very much. Through highs and lows, I must conclude there's no one like my hometown weather dude. The best one in America, and there's a fact that you can take to the... I'll miss you, Bank. I'll miss you, Bank. Thanks, Mark, you, Bank. Well, I guess you can say just about anything you want to say tonight, well, can't you? I can oh. say thanks. That's uh, <laughs> And maybe wonderful. the tortoise will fill those shoes. I don't know. That tortoise is pretty good. He's in competition, huh? You hate to be beat by a tortoise, but... <laughs>
We just think it's appropriate that you, you leave on a forecast where there's record lows and record lows and... Hasn't this been yeah. an interesting way to end this, <laughs> really? this last, oh this week so far has been really weathery and it has caused some concern. Let's start off and show you what the, uh, the last 72 hours have done in the Uintas. The snowfall has been rather significant. Two feet of snow up in the Uintas, Farmington Canyon, then you get to Alta, two and a half feet, Timpanogos and the Ochre Mountains. Oh, three and a half feet just in the last 72 hours. So this storm, it took a while and it ground away, but it, it left a lot of snow. The question is, did it help the snowpack? And the answer is, yes, it's going off fantastic. Now, October, November, we're two months into like an eight-month season, so we're a quarter of the way through. But look at this. Statewide, top to bottom, north to south, east to west, we're doing fine. How does the state average turn out? We are sitting at 120%. That's just what you want. You just want to keep going. If we could stay at this level, then Bear Lake comes up and, and Lake Powell comes up more next year. And we just need these storms to keep on coming. Guess where it's snowing right now? Seattle, Washington. If you had to pick a place in the country to live and you didn't want to be bothered with weather hazards, this is Tornado Alley, so maybe you'd want to avoid that place. So you come out to the west, that's a good place to live, right? Well, the west has earthquakes, and there are a few spots where earthquakes occur in the eastern part of the country. All right, so let's go to the deep south. No problem there. Yeah, you've got hurricanes. Hurricanes and floods are common in this part of the country. Maybe the Midwest, the upper Midwest. Well, you get blizzards and bitter cold. You go to the southwestern deserts and you have heat. You come over here, you have heat and humidity, enough that it sometimes takes lives. So where in the country do you go and not have a weather hazard? There's one spot. Look at that. Southeastern Utah, Bluff and Blanding. You guys are the only place in the country that doesn't have a major weather hazard. I'm proud to live in the same state as you guys. Now. These storm totals are for the last uh, 72 hours. This is the three-day total of snowfall. Logan, Layton, okay, it did snow, but it wasn't huge. Fillmore, whoa, it really came down in Fillmore. And by the way, the stars indicate record cold. Pleasant Grove, record cold high. 12 inches at Park City, the town. That's right where Deany lives. Eight inches in Salt Lake City. Eight inches in Spanish Fork. Sandy had a few. It, extremely variable and that's that's what happens in Utah by the way look at this 37 high in st. George and a 28 now and that isn't a record not even record cold as cold as that is look what's coming storm complex but it's this piece right here that seems to have broken away and is caught in the jet stream flow here's our old storm that's moved out this is why it's snowing in Seattle you know where that's going Zzzz right down the jet stream, right towards Utah. Now, tomorrow, Utah should have increasing clouds with storminess here. But look what happens Friday morning. Right on through with, it doesn't look like a big storm, but there could be an inch of snow in the valleys very easily Friday morning for the commute. Sub-zero, sub-zero, it's just going to be a cold night, especially where there's fresh snow, the clear skies. We are expecting some high clouds by morning, and that, that may temper it from getting even worse than it could be. Sub-zero, sub-zero. Pretty cold day. St. George, two extra cold days. Then, a little moderation back to the 50s with freezing temperatures at night, every night. Northern Utah, clouds increasing in the afternoon, kind of a gray, almost a murky afternoon. And that'll trap the temperatures in the cold level in the 20s, 27 expected tomorrow. That is significantly colder than normal. We're expecting a little snow early Friday morning. The chances of that are probably 60, 70 percent. Not a guarantee, but enough that I put a green bar on. There you go. And then 31 and 16 on Saturday. Cold and clear. And my mother's was from Blanding. I guess it's time to go home. Yeah. That's a, she <laughs> picked a good spot, right. didn't she? She really did. I, I would like to just say at this point, Thanks. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to everybody. We had the snow coat out last night and uh, did a little presentation. Uh, I started wearing that coat in 1970, and the idea is the coat goes on before the snow. Well, a little handoff ceremony to Kevin. Oh, look at that. Good fit. He's got the coat, wow. and it's now his responsibility, and Kevin... <laughs>
Kevin each night, when there's a storm expected, to wear this white coat. As a matter of fact, you're wearing it now. I do have it on now. Well, there we go. Thursday night, Friday morning, a little snow expected. It may be back out tomorrow. You've got to stay tuned. <laughs> I wish you well. You'll do great. Thanks. i just like to thank you guys on the set, Dick and Deanie. It's been a pleasure. I love working with you guys. Love coming in every night. Keith Merrill. Keith is a, a special guy. He's been my weather producer for the last 16 years. Every night, Keith runs the graphics, <laughs> makes all is. the good stuff. <laughs> Hi, Keith. Very camera shy, but a wonderful individual. We've Keith, never seen his face. We thank you. <laughs> and I'd like to thank the viewers. Each night, it's been my honor to come into your homes. You've invited me, and I, I thank you for that. It's been fun. It's been a, a thrill. A little bittersweet tonight. Uh, I'll, miss, I'll miss talking to you each night. But I know you're in good hands with Kevin and Dick and Deanie. We'll miss you. Keep us posted. You make it worth watching, pal. Thanks. Sure been fun. You me really well. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Thanks. On the way. All right, friends. Tonight, a longtime friend of mine and also a mentor is uh, starting to sign off. Is signing off for the last time. That is Mark Eubank started his career. There he is. Look at that plaid coat. I love it. He started his career here at Channel 2 back in the 1960s and worked here until 1990. He also gave me my first big break in television, showing me how the weather works in the state of Utah. Tonight, he's ending his 40-year run in Salt Lake City, and I just wanted to wish him the very best in his future endeavors. There is no one, there is no other Mark Eubank. That is absolutely for sure. I remember watching him in college at BYU and making all of my roommates absolutely quiet down or leave the room <laughs> when Mark came on because he was just so a inspirational. wonderful man. He still has a spring in his step, absolutely. lots of enthusiasm. He's going to have a great time. Good you know, retirement. Whenever you can do anything in this business for 40 years, Michelle. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's pushing it for me, but uh, then that's saying something. To this is a that's kind of longevity. This is a fickle business, and whenever yeah. you can do that, you've got something going for yourself. So. Wish you well, Mark. Have a great time. <laughs> We'll be right back.